Hello, welcome or welcome back to Sapling Tarot. My name is Imogen. Today I'm going to be doing my solar return spread using Kelly Bear's solar return spread. Um, I've not done this before, so I am excited to try it out. I have a number of decks here. It is, well, it's the day after my birthday, but technically it's two days after my solar return, uh, which was on Saturday. Let's get tarotting. So I have my notes. I've done some like maths and stuff and organised decks. Um, I don't have runes or charms that I want to use today. So I've got two oracle decks, um, which are kind of slightly different things. I've got an art print of my card 2024 which if you saw my finding your cards video I think I maybe mentioned this but 2024 for me is a hanged man year and this is from the literary emporium and it's just like a little art print of Hamlet which <laughs> is a little bit of a bleak character perhaps to be summing up my year but I'm okay with it um so one to four is um so it's an oracle card for each quarter of the year coming up i'm going to be using the citadel oracle so we've got one for cancer leo and virgo one for libra scorpio and sagittarius one for capricorn Aquarius and Pisces, and one for Aries, Taurus, and next Gemini season. I'm going to probably lay all the cards out first <laughs> so that I get like a nice picture of how things are, and then I'll start turning them over. So the next bit is to do the little kind of central tarot spread. Um, I'm going to be using the Lilitha deck because that's the deck that I've been working with. Uh, through Gemini season and I'm already getting anxious about um, about putting it away uh, because I've been enjoying it so much and um, so we've got position number five is a lesson from the previous year and then we've got something to let go of something to begin and something to carry forward and then we've got, I'm going to run out of space, I think. Um, so we've got a challenge, a goal, and an opportunity. So then we're moving on to, so I've got one major from the uh, Spacious Tarot for a central theme for the year. Oh, we've just seen it. Spoilers, Imogen. And then we've got an ace for the energy and the focus. And we've got a minor for advice and guidance. And then we've got a court card for an attitude to cultivate. And then we've got my card of the year and the oracle. This is the Hedge Witch's Botanical Oracle. This is for my card for support and encouragement. And then I've got the Bloom and Lovelies Oracle that I've been working with this month for just something a little bit silly, another sort of support encouragement something to think about etc so there we have it we have all of the cards as seems to happen when i do these kinds of readings um on video um you're probably about to learn some things about me so strap in and uh, let's get going so first quarter for the year ahead we have the musician then the weaver 
is quite funny because I know that Kelly uses the Weaver's Oracle for this part of her spread. Then we've got the twins. And so the, and then we've got the mascarari. The keywords we've got are, shall I show you? I'll show you them because I don't know if you can see them from all the way over there. So we've got coming up for this Cancer season, Leo season and Virgo season. We've got the musician, which is inspiration and gratitude. Then I've got the weaver for, I suppose, kind of the autumn rediscovery and transition that makes sense and i've got the twins for the winter self-protection and dual natures i mean as a gemini that that makes a lot of sense to me and then for next spring i've got the mascarari which is a word that i am butchering <laughs> um but yeah, hiding your true self and projection. So that's fun. I think I'm going to turn all the cards over and then certainly for the Oracle, maybe I might get the, will I get the guidebook out? I'll get the guidebook out. Treat yourself, Imogen. Okay, number five, a lesson from the previous year. Oh, the hermit. I mean, you're not wrong. Not wrong. Um, Let go of this. Queen of Pentacles. <laughs> Okay, something to begin. Hanged man, fuck off, I'm already. <laughs> I'm trying my best. And something to carry forward. Three of cups, well that's lovely. So a challenge, the empress, true. A goal, two of cups, very cute. And opportunities, the wheel of fortune card in the tarot that I seem to have the most of an issue with. I love this one though, because it's like a wheel and a spiral and yeah, this is my birth card. So, um, well, like one of the many, again, I direct you to that finding your cards video. So we've got a major for a central theme, which we already saw a little bit of. It's the emperor. Interesting. An ace for energy and focus, ace of wands, lots of fire, we've got four of swords, my pal, which is the advice and guidance, and then a court card, the explorer of swords, which is the knight of swords. So we've got loads <laughs> and loads of fire. Well, it feels like loads of fire. There's also swords, you know, which is more my comfort zone. But yeah, we've got the Emperor, the Wands and the Knight, or Explorer, so that's that's quite fiery, quite fiery stuff. Um, and then we've got Card of the Year and an Oracle for Support and Encouragement. We've got... that's not supportive or encouraging. I'm glad I got another one. Oh, it's going to be something grim now. Oh, it's just moons and cycles. And it's also the same as the back, so I always find this card really confusing, but I think it's a lovely piece of art. Yeah, well, you're not wrong. Oracle, you're not wrong. Just while we're here with the uh, the Liminal Eleven box, is that I know that everyone hates so much. I do recommend, so it's got like the central thing, and so with a lot of them you get like a piece of artwork that matches like the, the box. But if you hate the, the box design so much, just put the box back in upside down, and then it is just a normal box. Um, I see a lot of people that are stressing out about the packaging and yeah you can just you can just have it as a normal box you don't have to have the whole drawer situation um just saying so what have we got for the musician so the musician is in the troop so those are like the outsiders oh how many of them are in oh fuck me they're all in the outsiders i swear that deck was shuffled now, this is where I struggle a little bit with the old uh, year ahead reading. I did one last winter, which I did actually film and put up. It's really good for like, you know, themes to think about and stuff to focus on and stuff to learn about and all of that kind of stuff. Stuff to look out for, etc. If you see something that's potentially a little bit like anxiety inducing, maybe, um, I think you've got to be really careful. I mean, you've got to be careful with that in like tarot in general. 
if you're in any way prone to anxiety or uh, you know genuinely like paranoia and stuff like that um, like I got the tower for my year ahead and I spent the whole of the month that that was like my card of the month for like I mean to be truthfully honest like absolutely shitting myself I was so worried and like I was trying so hard not to be you know just trying to like hold it lightly do everything I would tell other people to do and be like you know it's just a theme it's something to think about and you know there are no bad cards in tarot it's all about like every card is neutral and you can see it in like positive and negative ways depending on like the context and all of that kind of stuff and, you know how much can you really get from one card and like all of this stuff and so like the most tower-ish thing about that month was the fact that I was kind of irritable because <laughs> I pulled the fucking tower three months prior so I'm not going to be like too or I'm going to do my best to not be like worried about the fact that these are all like outsider cards and stuff so yeah anyway that's my I'm going to talk about it again in like a year's time not in a year's time like a year on from when I did that reading um because there's been like some other stuff that's come up but yeah god you, you just you have to be so careful with all of this you know no matter how you read it whether you're like spiritual or predictive or entirely secular entirely like psychosocial um Jungian type whatever but you just you've got to got to watch out for your mental health I mean just in general but like particularly with any of this stuff so we have the troop internal thoughts and identity i'm just, I'm just gonna like read to you now story time the troop are a ragtag bunch definitely comprising people who've moved into the citadel from distant lands these are the travelers the dreamers the actors the creatives without home or final destination these wanderers are prone to a whimsical nature and adapt quickly to new situations hello gemini However, they often lack a sense of true identity, tending to reinvent themselves with every new location. Cards in the troop suit deal with emotions, internal thoughts, and questions pertaining to personal identity. Society expects us to present different sides of ourselves in different situations. These cards address not just our public identity, but also our private ego, and how to bring balance between the two. That's super interesting. I've been doing the um, June tarot challenge -y thing. Uh, from Lionhearts on Instagram and that's been like a major theme that's come up it's like to do with tying your tarot and astrology together and well, like using tarot to help you understand your own personal astrology and there's been so much stuff about bringing my like inner and outer worlds together so apparently that theme is going to be continuing closely connected with the element of water so not me particularly, um, although I am a Scorpio rising in like eighth house stellium. So I've got enough watery stuff going on and I've got some <laughs> watery stuff coming. The troop are stubborn enough to carve their way through the challenges of life, but also fall prey to the danger of trying to reshape themselves to fit into the containers that others make for them. Formative and fluid, water is the element of emotions and intuition. People associated with this element tend to think of their hearts, not their heads, and encourage both inner healing and adaptability. Being emotionally driven can also result in having unrealistic expectations both of yourselves and others, however, and can even lead to an inability to express yourself. Oof, okay. So, the musician. The musician. A ship sits in the dock, ready and waiting to sail on the next tide. But while the sea demands patience, music drifts from the deck, and with it a voice, one that sings in celebration of the bounty that has brought them to the citadel, and the promise of the next adventure ahead of them. Whatever the musician has, they work hard for it, and their gratitude and appreciation of their fortune spurs them on to an even greater future. The musician is the dawn that follows the night, and hopeful optimism after a period of struggle. After facing your problems, you're now in alignment with your true self. All will be soon. It's time to appreciate yourself. For the struggles you've come through given your achievements you're also in a unique position to provide inspiration to others who are still facing their own personal darkness well if i can take that that sounds charming um and i mean i don't know about like inspiration to others but like the rest of it i do feel like hopefully that's where i'm at 
now in terms of like coming through difficult stuff and trying to figure out what a life looks like without that I suppose because like I think a lot of people experience this when you go through like really shitty stuff and it goes on for ages if it finishes or if things get a little bit better or you learn how to manage things a bit better or whatever then like thinking about what life looks like or who you are without that struggle can feel quite like alien um and yeah I am really grateful that things aren't as bad as they have been historically for me or that I've got better at dealing with and managing the things that are hard and yeah I think I use a lot of that as like inspiration for myself you know I'm not really comfortable with being considered or considering like whether or not I'd be an inspiration to other people but like I think I use it as inspiration for myself of like you've done these hard things you've been through these hard things not like you can do anything but like I'm generally more capable than I think I am and to just kind of like try and trust that is a nice a nice thing going into a new birthday um I think I also meant to mention earlier um I'm going into a sixth house perfection year which is about like I don't know I know that people talk about like Virgo being about like health and stuff which I don't love because I tend to try and keep that out of my tarot and astrology practice mostly because I'm not like I'm not qualified in any of that um I know that there are some amazing astro medical whatever people out there but it's just not my thing at the moment um and so I've been thinking about like Virgo and I have my Mars in Virgo and uh Aries is my sixth house so it's all very um full circle making a lot of sense but it's like energy that I'm definitely gonna have to be working with as we saw with the Emperor <laughs> um so yeah that's just like another thing about my year ahead am I giving out too much information on the internet maybe um okay and then we have the weaver to so that Libra, Scorpio, and I can't read Sagittarius. Of course, it's Sagittarius. What else would it be, Imogen? Uh, so we've got the Weaver. A shuttle clicks and clatters back and forth. A loom moves under a skillful pair of hands. The Weaver takes the threads of fate and turns them into something whole and beautiful. New patterns and stories emerging with every swing of the loom. The Weaver does not control the weaving, they only guide it, and an unexpected design emerges. Ooh. I've been watching too much of the X-Files recently. Uh, I mean, I'm into this design. I think that's beautiful. I think this deck is beautiful. Um, but something like, you know, rediscovery or transition around my school period season always feels quite apt. Um, so the threads of your life are long and entirely unique to you. It's time to turn them into something complete. Take the messy loose ends that you don't know what to do with and make them part of you too. In doing so, you may discover a part of yourself that you didn't recognise before or rediscover a forgotten thing or person who brought you pleasure. Yeah, there's a lot of this. There's a, there's a lot of this in like all of my readings recently. Um, but it feels like it's not just recently that this is just a consistent theme over the last maybe like 18 months um I need to look at like the astrology of it all or whatever but yeah just this idea of kind of like what the musician thing was was saying about like coming to the end of one thing and starting something else but having to figure out what that thing is and I even feel like I've talked about it on here before so it's definitely been going for a significant amount of time but I love that idea of, you know, weaving one's own fate for the autumn. I could be on board with a bit of rediscovery and transition. I mean, the autism in me is freaking out at the idea of more change, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm on board. Okay, so the twins. I also want to get back into doing like textile art 
Uh, so that's like a really literal <laughs> interpretation. Uh, so maybe once the autumn comes around again, I'll, I'll actually do that. So for the winter, we've got the twins. Self-protection and dual natures. God, these cards are so beautiful. I'm a sucker for a minimal colour palette. But yeah, anyway, okay. A quiet courtyard. The soft murmur of a nearby tea shop. The call of songbirds. And a blazing argument shattering the peace. The twins were born at the same time, but they couldn't be more different. The first, a dreamer, charming and surrounded by friends. The other, more worldly, but dogged by life's injustices and feelings of inadequacy. Stop. I'm in this deck. This is okay, fine. Um, that's the inside of my head. Each twin feels the pressure to measure up to their sibling, but that pressure is entirely internal. <laughs> Neither is judging the other, only themselves. Fuck sake. Okay, this card relates to a specific relationship in your life. Yes, my relationship with myself. Uh, you and the other person are bound together, but past traumas are blocking your ability to make this a harmonious relationship. Did my therapist write this book? Be kind and take time to reassess your behaviour. Are you really being fair to the other person? Probably not. How are you continuing old habits or resentments? There is kindness in acknowledging that we're all human. Right, okay. I... <sighs> when the cards read you, am I right? Okay, so... I don't know if there's anything else I need to say on that one, but apparently during the winter I'm going to be reckoning with some stuff that's been coming up in therapy a lot recently, which is, um, yeah, fuck's sake, alright, okay, the masquerary, masquerary, I don't know, I can't speak, okay, so, keywords, hiding your true self and projection, down a quiet side street, hidden in the twisted back roads of the citadel, a shop waits for its next curious visitor, Thousands of faces line the walls, masks in every shape and form and colour. At their centre, their creator, wizened hands painting rouge on the cheeks of their next masterpiece. The masquerary has made so many masks that they do not remember who they were when they first opened the shop. Oh god. Is this like a big autism metaphor? Each one is an expression of their spirit, their creative heart. Each one is made by chipping away little pieces of themselves to sell to the next customer. Wow, this deck really just fucking goes there, doesn't it? Okay. We all wear different masks to appease the people around us. At work, with friends, in front of family. Each mask is a part of ourselves we think is appropriate in the moment, but by being so concerned about others' opinions, you can use you can lose sight of your true self. Stop changing to fit public expectations. It's time to work out who you are and what you want your life to be. Who is your genuine self? Let yourself be vulnerable and show others the real you. Okay, so it's a, it's a big old autism metaphor. We love that. So that's next spring. So I can put off dealing with that for like nine months. So yeah, that's another thing that's been coming up a lot in therapy. And I've even been doing like parts work, which is based on the internal family systems model. Um, I've been finding really challenging and trying to figure out what myself is. And there's like all of these words and I will maybe try and remember to put them up on the screen, but they all begin with C. Um, my brain's just imagining cunt being one of them, but no. Um, it's like curiosity and compassion and all of these things that it's like, you know you are being like yourself when you exhibit all of these things. And yeah, I'll try and like put a diagram up, but it's been a big question. And so there we go. Uh, so that's my uh, four quarters of the coming year. On to the Lilitha portion. So, lesson from the previous year for Hermit. It's interesting because one of my goals for 2024, and like my birthday comes at a kind of useful time for, I suppose, like mid year check ins, was to put myself out there more, which I've been doing here. <laughs> been you know fairly consistently putting up like more videos than I thought I would so um there's that you know putting myself out there and yeah I've been like trying to talk to people more I don't know how how successful I've been at that you can be the judge of that but I think yeah it's like 
like with all of these things I suppose and like a lot in tarot and a lot in life it's about balance and finding out what works best for you and trying to not be like led by what other people say is always best and just trying to figure it out which is hard because like it would be so much easier and less energy if there was like a definite you know you need this many hours of sleep and this many hours of like social contact and this many whatever 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 like the sims or something um and so it's about like i suppose i've been relearning my limitations which i think is something that a lot of people uh that live in like disabled bodies are kind of constantly having to adapt and shift to and so thinking about what is sustainable and I think the hermit it's like I don't know it's quite a lot of introspection but also kind of gathering resources and doing your research and I think that's something that I've been doing a lot but like I can often be a bit too analytical intellectual about stuff and think that I can kind of research my way out of any problem um but I think my hermit experience over the last year has been about putting the research into practice and kind of effectively like experimenting um and trying to see kind of what my life looks like now um, and yeah, just trying to like find my way back to, well, it's not even finding my way back, but it's like trying to find my way to like, you know, my version of a new normal, etc. Um, so yeah, but I mean, also still being a bit of a hermit and not really going out much or like talking to people, but I'm kind of okay with that. Um, I'm not doing it like because I'm miserable. I'm doing it because that's like who I am and what I want. I think. I think, I don't know. It's like, being a Gemini introvert is a hell of a fucking ride. So then we've got something to let go of. And we've got the Queen of Pentacles, which, I mean, I think that she's just, she's such a gorgeous card, why would you ever want to let go of this? But I know what this is talking about. Um, and I'm sure many people out there understand what this is like. I, like, my anxiety around finances and stuff is like debilitating at times and it's I think it limit me and like like the chances that I take and the risks that I take um and I think of I think of the queen of pentacles with that well that's what I think of when I think of her I think that's what I want so badly that I'm not even like prepared to take the risks that could maybe get me there and so there's like, there's a kind of a letting go, loosening my grip thing that kind of has to happen. But then like some other things have to happen before I can do that. But I think that this is, yeah, I'm sure it's, you know, I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. But um, yeah, that's, that's something tricky. And then we've got something to begin. Gymnastics, obviously. Um, so this is my card for the year. As we, as we said, we've got the hanged man, hanged one, whatever. Um... I love that there are bats. I mean, I've been learning more about the historic tarot. Um, and so like how the hanged one, hanged man can be like the traitor, which I remember in the gentle thrills tarot, I was like, why would, why would they be a traitor? <laughs> I like people to look chill and like they've kind of put themselves up there and they're just like having a different perspective and stuff. But I'm learning more about like why it, is the traitor and why sometimes people look really anguished and there's so many different ways that you can read any card um but I love that there's a bat and I love that this came up like smack dab in the center of the reading because um I think I've mentioned it was my birthday yesterday and I saw the bats for the first time uh this year so that was really exciting um I live quite near like a ruined castle and bats nest there and sometimes they come out in the evenings uh, when it's just like getting dark and they eat all the myths and that's really cute and exciting and they were doing really good sweepy dancey stuff and it was felt very very grateful for them and yeah so that's nice 
that they've popped up for something to begin. Maybe I haven't started my yearly quest or whatever. Um, although I suppose you use it from your birthday, you work it out from your birthday, don't you? So maybe, maybe that's only just beginning. Um, but yeah, I'll get back to you about what the different perspective is that I need to take because I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, I also, like, I feel like I fucking bang on about it, but you know, it's a lot of my life. But I feel like The Hangman is often quite an autistic card because it always feels like you're looking at everything upside down compared to everybody else. So something to carry forward. Friends. Friends. And that means you. You're watching this. You are, you are this. I've been so grateful for the community that I've been able to build over the last year and like continuing building because so many things have happened over the last however many years that have meant that I haven't had as much community as I maybe did before. Um, like a lot of disabled people, I was kind of like <laughs> abandoned. That's a really strong word, but I mean, what other word is there uh, by people who just wanted to pretend that everything was over and everything was fine and we just needed to go back to normal. Um, and that's not my reality or the reality that a lot of disabled people are, are living in. And then within this kind of space from like October onwards, there's been a real, well, I mean, COVID showed it quite starkly. And then since October, it's been thrown even more into the light, the people whose values align with mine and the ones who don't, whose don't, <laughs> grammar. Um, and so if you're here, if you're still here, uh, if you even just like watched the video or left a comment or sent me a message or whatever, know that I really appreciate you and the people out there who, but yeah, I'm just really grateful uh, for all of you who share my values and, you know, think the same things are important as I do, uh, but that also are silly and fun and enjoy beautiful things and special interests and, uh, this funny little system of tarot. <laughs> so yeah, very grateful for you all being here. So a challenge, challenge of the Empress. And this was my card for January. Um, I had the one from the white human up and I love a badass Empress. Um, and she very much is one in that deck. Uh, she's very like, I don't know almost like going into battle but that's not that's not the kind of like girl bossery that I'm like super into but yeah she just looks really cool and badass and stuff I also think this empress is just gorgeous and yeah I mean just so beautiful I love her flower crown I love her little I don't know cherub beat whatever like the baby version of a devil is like a cherub devil on her shoulder and the whole like divine feminine femininity thing is something I've like struggled with historically. Um, I am often read as you know, girl, woman, lady, etc. Uh, despite not being that, and um, that's you know just been my life, and I accept it that you know it doesn't make me super miserable. It has been a bit of a struggle because like I, as like a lot of people did, I'm sure. I was very like not like other girls as a teenager and yeah just kind of distanced myself from like girls and women and all of those things and then realized that that was fucking patriarchy that was making me do that because girls and women are fucking amazing and obviously the empress doesn't have to be a woman or a girl or whatever um but in terms of like archetypes and softness i it's like a big learning thing for me to realize that because I am a huge fucking softie um, and to learn that that's like okay and how to manage that and how to not kind of have to do the stiff upper lip type thing. Um, yeah, the Empress is someone that I've historically kind of struggled with but I think I am doing better with her and I just think she's amazing. Um, yeah, so that's my challenge for the year, apparently, is to keep going on that journey. I'll, uh, you know, crack out the books again. And yeah, 
Okay, so oppor no goal. Goal is more connection, <laughs> more friends. Um, two of cups does make me think of like romance and stuff, and I don't, I don't think that's really a personal goal of mine. Um, although the Knight of Cups and the Two of Cups keep following me around, so maybe the Tarot is something I don't know, but. I think just like yeah more connection more sharing more like mutualness is definitely like a goal of mine and trying to figure out how that fits because like again living like a disabled life it's really easy <laughs> to feel like you're just a massive burden and everyone else is pouring from their cups into mine and like always having to look after me and stuff like that and that sucks <laughs> it's so shit to feel like that um and so to kind of try and accept I suppose this is like an empress thing of like accepting love and care and nurturing and having your needs met by those around you and not always having to be giving more than you take and for things to be more mutual is definitely a goal of mine of like trying to figure out how I fit into that kind of mutuality with like my skills and what I bring to the table and my you know compassion or whatever like whatever it is that I can bring to the table because uh so often it feels like I don't have anything to contribute and I know that's technically not true <laughs> um so and then we've got an opportunity wheel of fortune well isn't that just a big fucking mystery card an opportunity is things are changing. <laughs> um, anything could happen. Woo! Uh, yeah, not very autism friendly. Um, so I don't know if I have anything to say on that because me and the Wheel of Fortune, you know, we've got a bit of a tricky relationship. So opportunities are, well, I suppose take things as they come is. The opportunity to just try and say yes to things and to try to not limit myself um if things are changing and I do become able to do things or if I'm not able to do things and to just like keep plodding on with the cycle <laughs> as it turns you know wax on wax off etc um and just accept that I can't do everything, but I can maybe do more than I think I can. Oh, it's all feeling a little bit heavy. Um, so, okay. Central theme for the year. We've talked about the Emperor, we've talked about Mars, we've talked about, I don't know, all of that kind of stuff. I suppose, like, the challenge of the Empress comes quite nicely in with the Emperor, because it's all about, like, balancing the soft and the hard and the boundaries and the flexibility and stuff so I think that makes quite a lot of sense. Ace of Wands is the energy with the focus and the Ace of Wands is, always feels very like passion for me and I think that tracks with a lot of the stuff that I'm doing is just like trying to follow the passion and the interest um, and so yeah, that feels like it makes sense. Advice and guidance from the one minor arcana. We have my friend, the Four of Swords, who I affectionately refer to as the Burnout card. And don't you fucking know it, Terry? I always have this in the back of my head. I don't want to go back there. Um, but I do think that my fear of burnout holds me back. <laughs> so again, it's like this juggling and balancing thing that in terms of advice and guidance don't worry this is always in my head and then we've got the knight of swords for an attitude to cultivate so just fucking charging on through apparently is i mean not in this card in this card he's like cheaping clawing out the sword like the sword's done something <laughs> um but yeah like just just keeping on going keep writing down all of those busy thoughts the only way out is through etc etc i think i'll need to uh, ponder on on this a little bit more because i think my understanding of the knight of swords doesn't necessarily fit with this picture but 
Yes. And then we have the uh, the encouragement and support from Nettles. <laughs> I'm going to need the book for that. Okay, and we have the Hedwitch's Field Guide, which is the um, Botanical Oracle Guidebook, which is a lovely big, like, proper book. Nettle. Oh, wow, okay, it's pages and pages. Okay, so it refers to the Tower card and the Death card, so, like I say, really not the encouragement that I was maybe after. Um, separation, loss, failure, good, good. Okay, so it's like, things that are painful can be useful. Cheers, Oracle. Um, I will endeavour to make nettle soup at some point this year. <laughs> oh, I'll come back to that. And then we've got, yeah, wax on, wax off. This too shall pass. Everything moves in cycles. And I think oh, that's a perfect end point for a solar return because everything just keeps moving. We keep tracking. We've got summer solstice coming up this week. So that's like you know the middle of the light half of the year and so it's the days will be getting shorter before we know it and then it'll be winter and then it'll be summer and then it'll be winter and that is the way it goes so thank you for being here for my solar return spread um happy birthday fellow gemini's i hope you're all doing wonderfully um and yeah thank you for watching i hope you're taking really good care of yourself and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.